Hello everyone, this is Ray Knopka from Ray Software and in this session I'm going to be discussing how to effectively use our Ray's Component 6 product. We would like to think of Ray's Components as not just a collection of VCL controls but it's a, a user interface design system. Uh, with that there's over 125 general purpose native VCL controls. Uh, covers everything from panels and edits, uh, lists, buttons, uh, there's display capabilities uh, and so forth. It, it's quite an extensive library. In addition to the controls themselves, uh, if you're familiar with the product at all, you probably have heard that we have over a hundred different custom component designers. This includes component editors and property editors and, and other tools to help uh, provide quick access to customizing the, the components at the design surface. And, and really that is a core feature of, of our concern for the components themselves. So we don't just focus on the application interface, which is of course important, but equally important is the developer's interface. And this gives us some extensive power and flexibility that we pass on to uh, the developers that you guys can use our components very quickly and easily uh, to get into the real work that you need to do which is the, the business rules and the functionality parts of your user interface. Uh, and of course there's a great attention to detail in, in all of the properties and the names and the methods that we provide. Uh, it's a very consistent uh, interface to, to work with. And so really rather than get spend time in the slides let's see Raise Component 6 in action in Rad Studio XE3. As you can see, I've got Rad Studio XE3 installed. I've got a Delphi VCL Forms application, and of course, I have Raise Components already loaded. Uh, it's got its seven pages of components. I'm using the large icon size. I can fill them all up. Very visual icons allows me to track and locate the desired component very uh, easily. Um, Traditionally, I would do demos with race components where I show our toolbars and status bars and our group boxes and, and splitters and things, those big heavy hitter controls that you see all the time. Um, however, I, I, I showed those in last year's Code Rage section, so I'm not going to repeat the same thing in there. If you are interested in kind of that high level overview of some of that functionality, uh, I certainly recommend uh, going and downloading the replays from the vendor session from last year's Code Rage section. Uh, for today, though, I want to spend a little closer look at some individual controls, some underlying functionality, how we can write some extra code to add extra enhancements to our controls. Um, and so one of the first things that uh, I'd like to show is, is start out with something very simple, and that's a button. Uh, and, and we probably the most common control that we put down in our applications to invoke some user action. And um, you may not think that there's a whole lot that can be done with a button, but uh, we do provide a lot of visual feedback, so I'm not going to go into all of those right now. Um, but of course you can pick up the themes, the VCL styles if they're being used. It also has the ability to customize the appearance uh, and you can have it look pretty much the way you want. However, one of the things that we often have to do is set up OK and cancel buttons. It's a very common technique, but there's a number of properties that are required in order to do that appropriately. You have to set the default, the caption changes, the modal result, and it's very easy to miss one of those. So one of the first things that we provide is a context menu pretty much on every control in the library to be able to go in and say OK button and make that change. We now have all of the properties have been set up as they're supposed to. We can then go and drop another control down and change that to the cancel and we're good to go. We, we don't need to worry about making sure that we missed a property or we, we didn't set the cancel property to true on that so the escape won't close the dialogue. We're done. However, if we want to extend this even more, we can pull up one of the custom editors that are included in Ray's components and allow us to, to make some additional changes. Maybe we want to uh, provide, say, maybe a customized button, we'll call it accept, we'll make it a large size, and we've updated the, uh, uh, and we'll have it to be a default. We've updated the modal result. We can even see what it looks like if it's disabled or not. What's nice with the preview is I can make many property changes and if I don't like them I can cancel it out. I, I don't need to accept it but in this case I will and it's picked up all of the changes for me. So it's very straightforward, very nice, easy to use control. Uh, descending from that is our uh, bit button control. 
has the same basic functionality except it's designed to show an image. Now traditionally the image can be pulled in um, directly in a, in a glyph property so if we wanted to add the glyph we can simply do that and push that into the display. However, we also uh, fully support image lists through all, all of the controls in the library. Any control that supports displaying an image can get it from an image list. And so if I go and add an image list to my form here, again, context menu on everything, and connect my button to that image list, I can now select an image and every image I add into it's going to drop into my, uh, my image list. And so I can add a few things in here as needed. Add a little pencil. Each one I pick, I can close that and I can double click this to see that those same images have actually been added into my image list. Let me go ahead and cancel those and so now I've, I've updated that. Uh, Continuing on with the button controls, uh, another feature we've often had requests early on was the ability to display some additional choices from the menu. We don't have uh, the, the room constraints in our user interface, but we want to provide some extra functionality. Well, the RZ menu button is designed for exactly that. And uh, the way that works is we simply create a pop-up menu and we'll go ahead and uh, standard VCL menu. So I'm going to just add some standard options here. I know they're real exciting, but it gets me the point of, of what I want them to be. Let me go ahead and correct that real quick. Close this down. I'll connect my drop down menu with that pop up menu for this particular control. And now if I go ahead and run this, what I can see is that as I click the button, I get the context menu comes down. And I can make my selections, choose them, and have it do whatever I want. I can even have cascading menus and so forth. So real nice functional piece uh, to, to give me some extra UI capabilities there. However, one of the things that often comes up, especially with the adoption of the VCL styles, um, and, and let me illustrate something very quickly here this highlights another feature that we have. If we bring in a main menu and I'm going to add a main menu, I'm going to add in some templates just to give us a feel for what we um, what we can have. So I have my edit and my file. I've got a main menu in my application. I've got a pop-up menu coming from my buttons and uh, if I go ahead and update my actions, my appearance of my uh, control, I'm going to set it to be aqua graphite. I want to go with one of those dark, you know, graphics program type of styles. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick that, go ahead and run this application now. And what we're going to see is that, okay, all of my buttons picked up the VCL styles just like they're designed to. Uh, the main menu looks correct. However, when I drop down the menus, right now, even in XE3, the menus aren't converted into any matching style. It's really the traditional Windows style. The same is true for your drop downs. Well, Raise Components provides a way to fix that. So, what I'm going to do now is actually drop down, right click again, real quick to bring these in. I'm going to bring a menu controller. Now, the menu controller. All we do is drop it on our form and it's going to uh, customize the, all of the menus that are displayed inside of my application. And by default, it will pick up the custom, uh, the VCL styles that's used or theming styles that's used. We can customize some coloring if we're not using those. But, and so now I'll give my application another run. And we can see it come up. And what's nice is that as I drop it down, I've got now a customized drop down menu that actually picks up the styles. It picks up the gradient coloring from the, the, the VCL style. The same is true for the system menu. And so, uh, again, we can get some extra functionality by using the race components uh, controls. The next control that I want to highlight for just a couple moments is our tray icon control. Um, before I do that, I'm going to uh, change back my appearance. I'm going to remove that, get back to the window set, just because we don't need to highlight the, the styles at this point anymore. Uh, but what I want to do is, is go down to my widgets page and, uh, and pull in the tray icon, and I'll drop that on my form. And uh, I've simply set that up. Um, what's nice is that 
just by dropping in the form like the menu controller it automatically provides functionality into the application it will now sit in it takes the program icon puts it into the system tray uh, I can double click on that to restore it and so forth we can actually even extend it um, I can associate a pop-up menu with that tray icon and I just use whatever pop-up menu I want I'm going to use the same one I'm using for the menu buttons but you get the idea of where I'm going with this let me go ahead and uh, run this application now and what we'll see is that it comes up and I immediately have a new system notification icon coming in my display if I right click this there are the, the menu items that I had and it is also colorized according to the Windows version of the menu controller so this is what it looks like by default it picks up the current Windows styles uh, to display the the nice gradient fills and, and the images next to them if we were to have those uh, what's nice is I have my fully functional application if I go ahead and minimize it it gets removed from the tray but the icon is still there I can double click and it comes back go ahead and exit the application and it's removed off of the uh, system notification area moving forward uh, now that I see that uh, the raised display is in view here I actually want to spend a, a couple moments talking about uh, a few of the the display function uh, display components inside of raised components uh, and specifically there's three that I just want to highlight very quickly to let people know that they're available uh, the first is the line component um, which is it, it's a very simple control but it's it's quite powerful in that um, it uh, allows you to display you know segmented lines you can customize the appearance which way the line slopes it goes from corner to corner you can also have whether you have arrows at both ends or just at one end and uh, allows you to connect them together you can have a caption uh, that displays over the uh, uh, over the line and so we can have this be uh, you know parent relationship that gets updated we've got um, uh, the ability to these are transparent so hit areas and click events are only on the line itself so we can uh, create multiples of these and they'll be transparent if you wanted to connect things up so just if you had that need for a line it's a nice little control uh, the next one is the progress display and this control is like a uh, it's a little window uh, it's a just a graphic control allows you to display information in a, a window that will roll off old data so based on the number of lines that you have visible there's an add step method that you can call and each time you add a step to it it will go ahead and add an, an item to it so let's go ahead and do that real quick so we've got uh, I'm gonna create a count here I'm gonna increment my count just so we have something to to display of course I'm going to need to create that for me so I'll call it F count as an integer in here and so we will go ahead and set uh, the RZ progress display one and there's an add step and we simply add the step so count number and then int to string of F count and what's nice is the intent here is that as I click this I'm going to add steps to it and it will fill up and scroll old data out of view so if I go ahead and run this now what I'm going to find is I have count one two three and it will just keep rolling it doesn't store the old data it's really just a progress display and so as I'm completing tests and steps inside the application it's great for initialization or startup and I can run and give some more than just a single line statement as to what's happening and have that fill into the display so nice little usable tool there and of course because it descends from our uh, the, the panel functionality and the bordering it has all of the border capabilities that you're familiar with in raised components so any type of customizations is, is all available there uh, the final uh, control just to highlight in case you're not familiar with it is the LED display uh, just provides a, uh, a just a, a different way of displaying 
displaying some information using a uh, like a digital clock interface and it's actually quite nice to display times but you can also display text and letters and so forth uh, what is kind of neat is that uh, it does support uh, some animation built into it so I can say welcome to code rage 7 and go ahead and set the scrolling property to true and it will actually start to scroll and I can just change the direction to be scroll left or right I can also uh, handle an event so when the scroll finishes I can have uh, I can do some do something so on the scroll complete I know that it's reached the end of the you know scroll line I can change the message and continue to display other types of text uh, in there as necessary So moving forward, I'm, I'm actually going to do a little reset here. I'm going to get rid of some of the controls and uh, switch gears a little bit to uh, one of our data aware controls, specifically our DB grid. And uh, I'm going to drop one of those on the form. And I'm going to also drop in our buttons group our DB Navigator, uh, which we provide. It gives us the ability to customize uh, the icons. We have custom imaging in there and, and, and just some extra nice capabilities. Uh, of course, I also need to be able to bring in a, uh, some data, so I better get a, a, a data source. And I'll bring in a client data set as well. And what's nice, once I have those in place, um, I can, of course, select the, uh, the data source to connect to my client data set. Um, to do that for our, the controls, any of our data aware controls, which have the little disk next to them, just right click and, and select up the data source. So I'm going to pull up my data source values for both of those. Now I just need to get some data. And so here, let me go in and load up some data into my display. And I've got some my development, conferences, demo files, data set. Yeah, I've been doing this a bunch. So I've loaded in uh, some, some data into my grid and it uh, gives me a, a little display. These are some baseball players of the Chicago Cubs. Uh, I'm a huge Chicago Cubs fan and they did not do well this year, but that's okay. Um, what's more important though is I want to highlight some of the nice little add-ons that uh, uh, the race components DB grid gives. Uh, it's a direct descendant of the TDB grid, so all of that functionality comes into play. But one of the nice things that we've added is the ability to, um, to, to provide some extra UI capabilities. It has all the custom framing support that all of our other controls have, uh, but also offers something like our alt row shading. So one simple property to do, uh, to give it a little bit more polished look. Uh, it's nice, easier to see the separation between the rows when we, we do something like that, uh, which is very visual. Uh, another area that we have uh, inside of the grid is called Quick Compare, and it's a, it's a composite property that allows us to kind of add some on-the-fly uh, presentation changes based on some criteria that we set. And so, for example, uh, I can set up that, uh, let's highlight, we'll look at the at-bats column uh, of our data, and we'll go ahead and check to see if there's, uh, if anybody's had over 525 at-bats, we'll make the operation greater than, and activate it, and we can see that, oh, we've had three players with greater than uh, 525 at bats. Go ahead and change the value, maybe make it 500, reset it, and then we get the value back in uh, that highlights other fields. And we can do this for any other types of uh, uh, columns that we have, so if, how we want to interpret it. So if we wanted to do games, we can change it to the games column and who had over 120 games and we'll go ahead greater than equal to and we get a different set of players. So again, nice little feature. Of course, you can customize the color for both the alt row shading as well as the quick compare. Um, nice visual little tool for us to uh, to highlight there. In the DB grid, we used some properties at the design level to change the appearance. Next, we're going to look at a control where we actually write some event handlers to provide even lower level 
display capability changes in in way a control looks. Uh, the control I'm going to pick for this example is actually our track bar. And uh, if you see demos I've done in the past, you're, you probably have, have seen the track bar. It's a very flexible control offering lots of different thumb styles and capabilities. Uh, today I'm going to um, highlight two kind of more customized features, being able to draw a customized track and using owner draw tick marks. And we do that uh, by handling a couple events and changing one property to instruct the control to actually do this custom display. So we're going to first change the tick style to be owner draw and then we're going to go and change the on draw track event. And so inside of here, we're going to uh, do a couple things. And just because I know what kind of code I'm going to write, I'm going to need to add in the RZ common unit and the RZ graphics units. And these come with the library. Um, they have tons of functions, uh, helper functions and display functions, uh, functions to get information about the operating system and so forth. Um, so definitely take a look at what's available in there. But to start, I just need a rectangle and I'm going to assign that to the value that I get back from the draw border routine which is in RZ common and that's going to take a canvas and we can pull up the help and it's going to also take the bounds which is the bounds of our track and then I'm going to make this a simple status frame style there's a several different frame styles that are included uh, supported by raised components. The reason I'm taking the return value and putting into R is because after I draw the border based on the thickness of the frame and so forth the interior is what I want to now work with and that's what is it held into R. And so the next step is I'm going to use the paint gradient call and set this and to set the new bounds I want it to draw only inside the border I just drew and change this to horizontal end. I'll change it to CL red and CL blue so we'll have a little gradient going between the two. And let's give it a run. And so here we can see that sure enough our track now goes from the blue color to that has a recessed look. Uh, any changes resizing we'll just adjust that accordingly. So next let's take a look at how we draw the owner draw tick marks because we lost those. Well, I'm going to actually do something very similar. I'm going to set up another rectangle, and the reason for this is I need to determine where each label is going to be displayed. And I want the labels to be displayed next to their tick position. Well, what's the tick position? Well, the tick position is comes in to the event handler in the location uh, point. And depending on whether we're a horizontal or a vertical track bar, the location X or the location Y value will be what's important. And so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a new rectangle and we're going to start it with location X and the location Y is what we need to adjust. And so location Y, and we're going to make that a little bit above the tick mark and then we're going to add in another, we're going to say location dot x uh, plus the track bar and track bar is a parameter to this, this tells us which track bar we're using and so I'm going to bring in the track offset which is how far away the track starts so if we make it really wide we can make sure we're centered in that display area and then finally we're going to do location y plus 8 and this basically gives us a rectangle 16 pixels high to, to cover what we need to show um, I'm, I'm going to update the canvas of this track bar and change the font size to be 7 just so that we update that a little bit and then I'm also going to um, change the brush style to be BS clear just so that it's transparent and if I want I had to transparency uh, for this control then the background of it would would show through and then the final step is to actually draw the label and I'm going to do that with another helpful function inside of raised components which is called draw string centered there's a draw string as well which you can take various flags and here I'm just displaying the into string of the index and we're going to put it the bounds well that's what we just calculated it's our value r so let's go ahead and run this version and here we can see that sure enough we've got the position right exactly 
where each tick mark is. And what's nice about the owner draw tick positions is that if I go into the control itself and either I, I change its size, dimensions, or add more properties to it, let's change the max value to 15, I go ahead and rerun the application. What I see is that the tick positions get adjusted and they're still exactly where they need to be. Um, very powerful way of, uh, of, of customizing our display. The next control I'd like to highlight just for a few minutes is our RZ radio group. And um, it highlights a couple different things. One, it's uh, very similar functionality to the radio group that is built into the VCL, uh, but it also descends from our group box. And so we get all the enhanced group box capabilities uh, as well. Uh, but obviously, we're designed to create uh, a number of uh, radio buttons inside of our radio group. And that it works very well to do that. Uh, to do that, we can just go ahead and click the edit the radio box. So rather than search for the items, we just go ahead and, and add that in. And um, let's say I wanted to change this to be, uh, say, delivery options. So I can set up my caption. I can set up you know, uh, United States Postal Service. It's a little long. We'll do FedEx. Uh, I have a, a method to my madness here, DHL, for example. And uh, if you're familiar with the radio group inside of the VCL, when you have varying length strings like this, the, the, the behavior is quite odd because it really just makes the component uh, evenly spaced for each item. Well, with our version, we actually figure out the most appropriate size to use. So if I did want to make that three items long, it will figure that out for me. Uh, so it's a nice, easy way to, to customize that display. Uh, in addition, we have all the, the standard uh, styles uh, plus some additional ones like top line. We can go in and change that to banner, which is a nice one. Gets rid of the outer border, has a gradient fill. Of course, you can customize the coloring for that, uh, picking up uh, whether you're using the, the themes, the custom gradients, so forth. Uh, underline is kind of nice. Uh, of course, I can go back in and change this back down to two. Let me go ahead and load up a whole set of delivery options, for example, and, and I can set up the default right within the control. Click OK, and I've set up my UI to be the display, the functionality that I want it to be. The, the last section or, or topic that I want to cover for today's uh, demonstration has to do with persistence. Um, imagine we have, well, we, we've already got a, a control sitting on here. Let's go ahead and add, uh, we can add a checkbox. In our interface, it doesn't really matter what specific version we have, but we've got an edit box, checkboxes, various controls. Uh, in play and uh, we want to save those off and, and there's a number of different persistent uh, mechanisms inside of Ray's components but the, the most powerful one is the property store and this is the general purpose one that uh, I'm going to be looking at right now. Uh, very straightforward non-visual control we're going to establish a list of components and desired properties that we want to save off. Now in order for this to work we do need to add a, a, a storage mechanism and that is is, uh, by default that's our reg INI file control and so I'm going to go ahead and connect the uh, property store to it and if I go ahead and double click on my property store I get a collection editor and the editor is, is really just going to allow me to specify which component I want and so let's say let's take the track bar and the most obvious one would be the position so we're going to save that off. Then the next control, let's do the edit one and let's change the text. So we'll bring that. Let's take the next one and it drops this down. We'll do the uh, checkbox. And, and of course, if you drop it down, it tells you all the properties that are available for that particular control. And so we go ahead and uh, store the checked value for that particular control as well. Now, we still need to instruct the property store to save off its settings and restore them. So to do that, we're going to do that in the uh, the on create and the on close uh, is, is typical places to do that. You could also do it in the destroy as well. But uh, in the create, we're going to do the RZ property store one, and this is going to be a load. So we're going to load them up. 
Next thing is on the close, we're going to do the opposite. So we need to store those off. So property store one dot save. So let's see what the impact of this is. Oh, just moved up to the uh, interface unit because that's where the property store is loaded. It's a good error, if you will. Um, so I've got my initial settings here. Let me go ahead and change this. I'll put it to 12. We'll, we'll check the checkbox and we'll say code RAID 7. Go ahead and close this down. Now rerun the application and as we can see all of our settings get persisted. So very easy persistent store to set up certain settings that you want. Um, very uh, effective ways to, to do that, making simple two method calls and you can persist that out. Now the reg INI file will persist that to uh, the an application INI file by default. Uh, it can also go to a section in the registry. There's a, a bunch of properties and, and values that you can uh, customize where those data elements go. So that concludes my, my, my active demonstration of some kind of lower level behind the scenes controls that make up the library. Of course, we do have the toolbars and the image lists and the group bars and status bars and so forth, uh, but wanted to showcase some, some newer things, some, some things that don't often get a lot of attention. Um, just to recap, Race Component 6 comes with more than 125 general purpose native VCL controls. Uh, in addition, you have more than 100 different component designers, a lot of which I, I showed today. Um, right click on every component, those common properties are at your fingertips, make it much faster for, for developers to customize the, the appearance. Uh, you may have noticed I rarely go to the object inspector when I'm designing forms using Race Components. Uh, you get the complete source code for all of the components, all the, the, the units, the packaging. Um, we even provide the build script to rebuild all the components and packages uh, if, if, you, if you need to make some of your own customizations with the source code. Uh, all documentation is integrated into the appropriate Red Studio help. We support Red Studio 2009 through XE3, uh, both for 32-bit uh, and 64-bit. Windows development with your VCL applications, including C++ Builder. Uh, full support for the VCL styles, I, I touched on a little bit of those, but we even extend some of the support, giving you customiz customized menus uh, that aren't fully supported right now yet in the, the, the VCL. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's a great way to enhance your user interfaces uh, and add a lot of extra functionality uh, to your programs using Race Components. Uh, we have a special promotion going on during Code Rage. Um, there you can get all the detailed information of full pricing and so forth from the URL that's mentioned there. That's the, the, the raise.com dev tools Code Rage 7 uh, webpage. Uh, but specifically with Raise Components, we're taking $100 off the list price, uh, per developer list price of that. Uh, so the discounted price is $299. And of course, that's in US dollars. We offer other discounts on our other products as well. I'm going to be doing a, uh, a Code Site uh, Studio. Uh, demonstration during Code Rage as well. So if you uh, are going to tune into that, uh, we would love to, to show you some of the functionality in there. Uh, and of course, if you do want to order to take advantage of the, these discounts, uh, don't forget to use the Code Rage 7 pr pr promotion code on the ordering form. Uh, that will ensure that uh, the correct pricing gets applied to your order and um, will get you up to speed with uh, the latest and greatest of our Race Components product. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, take a closer look at some of the, 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 the base controls and functionality in our library. Um, if you have any questions right now, I will be switching over to the live Q&A portion. And uh, again, thank you very much for your time. Do these controls work with Delphi and C++ Builder? Yes, they do. Uh, Race Components, the latest release of version 6, which I was showing there, supports uh, Red Studio 2009 and later and uh, all the personalities that are included in that. So including the Delphi and C++ Builder and, uh, and now that the 64-bit C++ Builder compiler is available, uh, we'll be releasing an update to Race Components uh, in the next few days, which will include support for that. So you can use it in, in Delphi or C++ Builder uh, in any of those versions. 
Perfect. And uh, <clears throat> the next question you actually answered at the end of your session, which was also, is there any special show pricing? And uh, you have that available. We can go to uh, the uh, sponsor page or the uh, uh, exhibit hall as well and see that. Right. Um, do you have a mega main demo for uh, for race for C plus plus builder? Oh, the, the the demo program that in, it's included with the the product uh, it, it's our you know, big demo it demonstrates almost every single control in the product. It is written in Delphi. Um, however, you can load that into C plus plus builders and see how the properties and things are set. Uh, we have a little readme file that describes any additional steps that are needed for that. Uh, we don't have a separate version that's purely written in C++. Uh, we certainly can investigate that, but um, as I noted in the text response, the, the methods that are inside that demo are, are so short. Uh, there's only a few that really manage the uh, loading of the RTF files for the descriptions of all the components on each page. Uh, most everything that is done in that demo is all done visually with the components and the published properties, so it really doesn't matter which language you're using, it's really just the VCL that, that manages all of that. Uh, what's the difference between RAISE 5 and 6? Uh, RAISE 5 and 6, uh, aside from some uh, some bug fixes and, and uh, low-level enhancements, the main things that uh, we supported was the 64-bit uh, Delphi and now C++ builder changes. Uh, back when XE2 came out, that's when we released version 6, so we had to do some special work to make sure that everything worked fine with 64-bit. Um, in addition, uh, one of the biggest changes, and I demonstrated this, was the support for the VCL styles. Um, we full support every component in the the product supports the VCL styles, um, even additional controls like our menu, as I showed in the demo, to to get that full look. So those are the two big features, and there's a number of smaller, minor enhancements. But we do have a what's new document on our web page in the race component section that describes the more details. Great. How long is your uh, promotional pricing available? Uh, the promotional pricing will be good for. Uh, well, about three or four weeks. I mean, we keep it pretty extended. Probably it'll be good till the end of the year just because of the replays. So we don't have a hard and fast rule on it. But uh, because we the replays will be out for, you know, indefinitely, we do make the, the promo available for quite a while. Okay, cool. And your final question will be, do you have a site license option rather than purchasing a license for each developer? Uh, we do. Uh, there is site license uh, pricing available. Uh, it's essentially if you have uh, 10 or more developers, uh, that makes the most sense uh, for getting a site license. Uh, contact our sales group at sales, S-A-L-E-S, -E at raise.com, and we can get a quote for you for that. Okay, fantastic. Uh, thank you very much, Ray, uh, for uh, these presentations today. You're welcome. Glad to do it. All right. And somebody says they love the components. Thank you. Well, thank you. We appreciate the feedback.